you select with the left mouse button. Orbit by holding the middle mouse button. Pan the scene with shift plus middle mouse button. And zoom in or out by scrolling the mouse wheel. First, we will delete everything present in this scene. So to do that, select everything by left click dragging over them. Then press X and select delete. We will now create the table. For that, we can start by adding a plane. So press Shift and A, and select plane under the mesh. Now, let's move this a bit up. So press G, then Z to restrict the movement in the Z axis only, and left click to confirm its position. Now this table needs some thickness. We will do that by using a solidify modifier. So go to modifier properties, and click on add modifier. Then select the solidify modifier. Increase the thickness value. Now the edges and corners of this table are too sharp. So, unless if you want somebody's head to get cracked open after they fall onto this table, let's apply some bevel to it. So in modifier properties, add a bevel modifier. Lower the amount value. If you hold shift while changing the value, you get more control over it. Then increase the segment to 2. Now let's smooth this out, so right click on the viewport, and select shade smooth. And just to fix the shading issues we are having right now, we can try adding more geometry to the model. So go to add modifier, and add a subsurf modifier. And then increase the viewport subdivisions to 2. Now it's time to give this table some legs. But instead of adding a new mesh for the legs, we can simply duplicate this one. This will make our work easier, since it has all the modifiers already, which will be needed for the legs. Duplicate using Shift plus D, then right click to cancel the movement. Before moving forwards, it will be better if we switch to the top view, by pressing tilde key, and selecting the top. And also switch to wireframe view with Shift plus E, so we can see both the meshes. Then move this with G, and place it such that the origin point, is at the intersection. Now we need to scale the leg down. So press S to scale down, and then left click to confirm. You can now exit out of the wireframe, by pressing Shift plus E again. Here since we scaled our mesh in object mode, we will need to apply the scale, so our modifiers don't act strangely. Press Ctrl plus A, and select scale to apply. Now obviously, we will need a longer leg. So first press tilde key, and select front for the front view. And then increase the thickness value, in the solidify modifier. And maybe lower down this a bit on the Z axis. Now we need 3 more legs, to make this table look like a regular one. You can do that by duplicating it. But, making the legs symmetrical will be tough for you. So instead, we will use a mirror modifier. Select mirror modifier from the second column. Nothing happened here, because, we need to set the mirror object first. We will mirror the legs with respect to our tabletop, so select the picker tool, and click on the tabletop. So the mirroring works, but we need legs on the other side as well. Currently, it is mirroring only on X axis. We can click on the Y, to mirror it on the Y axis as well. Now let's see how we can capture an image of our model. So we will need a camera to do that. Press Shift and A, and select camera, to add it to the scene. Then find a right angle to see the model. And then to align the camera to that view, press Ctrl, Alt, and 0 on the numpad. Then to change the aspect ratio, go to output properties, and set the X and Y resolution, to your liking. Now since the model is not inside the frame, press G to move the camera. Again press G. And click the middle mouse button, and then move the mouse up or down, to zoom in or out. Now let's light our model. Shift and A, and select point light under the light. Let's move this a bit up with G, then Z. You are not seeing any difference, because you are in solid view. You'll need to change the view to material preview, to see the light and materials. Now with the view set to material preview, you can see the light. But the thing is, this lighting is done by some 360 degree world environments, which comes bundled with Blender. Not the point light added just now. To disable this world environment, mark scene world. And to see the light cast by the scene lights, mark the scene lights. Before moving forwards, let's split this viewport, so we can see the model from multiple angles. 
To split the editor, take the cursor near its corner. Then once you see the target symbol, left click drag to the left side for a vertical split. Change this to solid view. And also switch to the side view. Now, let's split this one as well. Here, once you see the target symbol, left click drag up to make a horizontal cut. Change this one to the top view. If you press T on all the viewports, you can hide the toolbars just to get some more room to work with. And also in the first editor, hide the gizmos and disable the overlays as well. Now with the light selected, go to light properties. Then increase the power to around 100 to make it brighter. And then move this to the corner so it's not directly over the top of the model. Let's increase the light radius as well. Now, let's add an area light. Move this up. In the light properties, increase the power. And also increase its size. Now I want this light to rotate around the 3D cursor. So we'll have to change the pivot point to 3D cursor first. Then from the side view, rotate the light by pressing R. Then in the top view, maybe rotate it a bit more. Now I'll want another light on the other side. So instead of adding a new one, let's duplicate this one. Press Shift plus D to duplicate, and right click to cancel the movement. Then R to rotate it. Now let's create a backdrop for our model. We will start with adding a mesh plane. Then press Tab to enter its edit mode, so we can edit it. Press S to scale it up. Then press 2 to enable edge selection and select one edge at the back. Then extrude that up by pressing E and Z, then left click to confirm its position. Exit out of edit mode by pressing tab again. Then rotate the plane on the Z axis. Now I want to give this an illusion of infinite background. So go to the modifier properties, and add a bevel modifier to it. Increase the amount, and also increase the number of segments. Then right click on it, and select shade smooth. Also, let's give this some material. So go to Material Properties, and click on New, to add a new material. Then under Base Color, choose a color of your choice. Now go to the Render Properties, and make sure the Render Engine is set to EV. Then turn on Ambient Occlusion, and increase the distance to a larger value. Turning it on made the contact shadows much more noticeable. So the model doesn't look like it's floating in this space. Now scroll down, and select Color Management. Then set the look to high contrast, so the color pops up a bit more. And adjust the exposure to control the brightness. Now save this project with Ctrl, Shift, and S. Select the file folder, where you want it to get saved. Name the project, and select Save As. Now, let's render this image. So go to the render menu above, and select render image. Once done, go to image, select save as. Select a file folder, where you want it to get saved. Set the file format. Name the image, and select save as image. And when sharing this online, tag me in your image. So I can take a look at it. Thanks for watching this video. Please leave a like, and comment down below. Also, if you want more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications.